Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Alors, bienvenue à cette séance ordinaire du Conseil municipal de la ville de Kirkland en ce lundi 5 juin 2023. Il est d'abord proposé d'adopter l'ordre du jour de la présente séance ordinaire du 5 juin 2023 tel que déposé. Un proposeur. Un proposeur, Paul Dufour. Et second départ. Je seconde, Dominique Zito. Merci. Item 3.1 of the agenda is proposed that the minutes of the regular sitting held on May 1st, 2023 be approved. Proposed. All proposed that, Steve Bouchard. And second. All second, and Nancy Cook, Mercedes. Thank you. Point 3.2, il est proposé de ratifier le procès verbal de la séance extraordinaire tenue le 18 mai 2023 à 8h30. Un proposeur. On propose à Mike Brown. Et secondé par. Un secrétaire John Morrison. Merci. Au point 4, compte payable, il est proposé de confirmer et d'approuver le paiement d'un montant total de 3 748 29,45 pour l'ensemble des chèques émis et annulés, les dépôts directs et les paiements préautorisés pour la période du 1er au 31 mai 2023. Un proposeur. Je vais proposer le chair de Jacquin. Secondé par. Le conseil de Jacquin. Merci. We are now under uh, bylaws at number 5. The first one is 5.1. It is proposed to give notice of motion that bylaw Gen 2023-51-1 entitled bylaw amending bylaw number Gen 2023. Je peux marcher dans, dans ici avec des citoyens. Je suis un citoyen parmi des On citoyens. est en période d'assemblée. S'il vous plaît, vous asseoir, M. Pichon. Vous distribuerez le papier après la séance. Vous distribuerez le papier après la séance. Non, c'est trop tard. Soyez-vous. Hey, are you in charge? Non, pas trop en place. Ok, parfait. What, what a place. Okay. It's so friendly here. So if you're not happy, you can leave. I don't want to leave, okay? Okay, you see, it's correct. Okay, have you seen anything you do? Okay. It is proposed to give notice of motion that bylaw number Gen 2023-51-1 entitled bylaw amending bylaw number Gen 2023-51 establishing tariffs for certain municipal uh, services in order to replace schedules A and B will be submitted for adoption at a subsequent sitting of the Municipal Council. The object of this bylaw is to update the tariffs for certain services and to file this draft bylaw. The adoption of this bylaw is scheduled to take place at the regular sitting of July 4, 2023. I get those motion tabling of the draft bylaw, Steve Bouchard. Thank you. So, maintenant, point 5.2. Il est proposé de donner à l'émotion à l'effet qu'à une séance ultérieure du Conseil soit présentée pour adoption le règlement numéro 2016-55-2, intitulé Règlement modifiant le règlement numéro 2016, euh, 2016 euh, sur l'occupation, j'ai dit tiré 55, hein, c'est tiré 53-2, désolé. Donc, euh, 2016 53 sur l'occupation et l'entretien des bâtiments afin d'inclure les terrains vacants. L'objet de ce règlement est d'inclure une disposition relativement aux terrains vacants et de déposer ce projet de règlement. L'adoption de celui-ci est prévue à la séance ordinaire du 4 juillet 2023. Un proposeur. Je présente un avis de motion et dépôt du projet de règlement. Merci, Cognacidis. Merci. Item 5.3. It is proposed to give notice of motion that zoning bylaw number 9058-107, um, entitled Bylaw Amending Zoning Bylaw 9058, in order to ensure its concordance with the Provincial Residential Swimming Pool Safety Regulation, will be a, a submitted for adoption at a subsequent sitting of council and to table this draft resolution. 
It is also proposed to adopt this draft bylaw as stable before Council, a copy of which is available to the public on the town's website. This amendment to the zoning bylaw is required to order, uh, in order to postpone until September 30th, 2025, the date by which resi residential pool owners must comply. The original date was July 1st, 2023. A public consultation for those interested will be held on June 19th at 5.30 p.m. and a public notice announcing this public consultation will be published June 9th on the town's website. The adoption of this uh, bylaw is scheduled for July 4th. I will table the, the I will give the notice a motion notice a motion and table the draft bylaw. Okay, now for and now for the adoption of the project, I need a proposal A or something like that. I will propose it all before. And second. I will second it, Dominic Zito. Merci. <coughs> 5.4. Le règlement de zonage numéro 90-58-106, intitulé Règlement pour modifier le règlement de zonage numéro 90-58, afin de tenir compte des expropriations du REM, est présenté pour adoption. Considérant qu'à une motion a été donnée et qu'un projet de règlement susceptible d'approbation référendaire a été déposé et adopté à la séance ordinaire du Conseil municipal du 3 avril, Considérant qu'une assemblée publique de consultation portant sur le projet de règlement a été tenu le 18 avril et qu'un second projet de règlement a été adopté à la séance du 1er mai, considérant que, suivant la publication d'un avis public indiquant la possibilité de présenter une demande de participation à un référendum, aucune demande n'a été reçue de la part des personnes intéressées. Euh, considérant que ce règlement a été mis à la disposition du public sur le site euh, internet de la Ville, il est proposé d'adopter le règlement de zonage 90-58-106 euh, règlement, modifiant le règlement de zonage 90-58 afin de tenir compte des expropriations du REM. Ce règlement entrera en vigueur le 9 juin, suivant la publication d'un avis public à cet effet sur le site Item 5.5, the final resolution of the scalpy demand for the immovable located at 16781 Trans Canada Highway is presented for adoption. Considering that notice of motion was given and a draft of this resolution containing provisions making it a resolution subject to approval by way of referendum was filed and adopted at the Council of April 3rd. Considering that a public consultation meeting on said draft resolution was held on April 18th and that the second draft resolution was adopted at the regular city of May 1st. Considering that following the publication of a public notice indicating the possibility of submitting a request to participate in the referendum, no request was received from the interested persons. Um, considering that the final resolution of the scalpy demand for this immovable was made available, available to the public on the town's website, it is proposed to adopt the final resolution of the scalping demand for the immovable located at 16781 Trans Canada Highway. This resolution will come into force after uh, obtaining a certificate of compliance from the agglomeration and being published on the town's website. I propose that. I propose that, Councillor. And second by. All second that the general chapter. C'est tout pour les règlements. Nous sommes maintenant dans la section contrat, le premier étant le 6.1. Il s'agit euh, du contrat Génie 2023-320, canalisation de fossés pour les rues Harold et Summerhill. Suivant cet appel d'offre publique, cinq soumissions ont été reçues à l'intérieur du délai imparti. Les soumissions ont été ouvertes publiquement le 29 mai. Et à la suite d'un examen des documents reçus, les soumissions ont été jugées conformes aux documents d'appel d'offres. 
et proposer d'octroyer le contrat GEMI 2023-320 à les entreprises J. Piccioni et le plus bas solutionnaire conforme pour un montant total de 1 64 730,24 sous. Toute taxe applicable incluse, le tout étant conditionnel à la réception du certificat d'autorisation du MELCCFP. Un proposeur, je me propose d'un mort. Et secondé, en second accord de voir. Merci. Item 6.2 is the awarding of contract GME uh, 2023-8810 Professional Engineering Services for the design of plans and specifications with partial supervision of the work to update the traffic light distribution and control box. Following this public call for tenders, one bid was received within the allotted time frame. The bid was opened publicly on May 18th. A selection committee meeting was held on May 29, and following its evaluation according to the criteria set out in the tender documents, the bid was subject to a calculation of the final score. It is proposed to award this contract to GHD Consultant Limited, the lowest confirming bidder for a total amount of $191,973.60. $191,973.76, all applicable taxes included. Proposed. Gentlemen proposed. Carry it. And second. All second that, Steve Bouchard. The point 6.3, it says the three of the contract GMI 2023 960, preparation punctual de conduite des goûts. Suivant cet appel d'offre public, deux soumissions ont été reçues à l'intérieur du même parti. Les soumissions ont été ouvertes publiquement le 26 mai. Et à la suite d'un examen des documents reçus, les soumissions ont été jugées conformes aux documents d'appel d'offre. Il est proposé d'octroyer ce contrat à CGI Environnement Inc., le plus bas soumissionnaire conforme, pour un montant total de 780 390,28 sous, toute taxe applicable incluse. Un proposeur. All proposed down the exeter. Item 6.4 Item 6.4 is the awarding of contract GME 2023 28 plumbing sur uh, maintenance service for municipal buildings with four renewal options. Following this public call for tenders, three bids were received within the allotted time frame. The bids were opened publicly on May 18, and following a review of the documents received, they were deemed compliant with the tender specifications. It is proposed to award this contract to Construction Retech 2014 Inc., the lowest confirming bidder for a total amount of $38,344.16, all applicable taxes included. Proposed. All proposed to channel the chart and second. I'll second that, Mike Brown. Point 6.5, it says de the trois du contrat TP 2023-39 pour le lot 1, travaux d'abattage de freins et de ramassage de débris ligneux. Suivant cet appel d'offre public, deux soumissions ont été reçues à l'intérieur du délai imparti pour le lot 1. Les soumissions ont été ouvertes publiquement le 26 mai à la suite d'un examen des documents reçus. Elles ont été jugées conformes aux documents d'appel d'offres. Il est proposé d'octroyer le contrat TP 2023-39, lot 1, à Arbo Design Inc., le plus bas soumissionnaire conforme, pour un montant total de 35 836,56 sous, toute taxe applicable incluse. On propose à Paul Dufort du second D. Un second acte, Steve Bouchard. Merci. Item 6.6 is the awarding of contract TP 2023-39, lot number 2, which is the Ash Tree Felling Works and Woody Debris Collection. Two bids were received for uh, lot number 2. Uh, bids were also open on May 26. Then um, the bids were um, compliant to the tender specification. It is proposed to award the lot number two of TP 2023-39 to Abattage Larivé Inc., lowest confirming bidder for a total amount of 
dollars and seventy-five cents on applicable taxes included. Proposed. Proposed. John Morrison. Somebody to second. I'll second that. Nancy Cummings says. Thank you. Nous sommes maintenant euh, à administration et finances. Le premier point est le 7.1, concernant l'expropriation de diverses parcelles de terrain appartenant à la ville de Kirkland dans le cadre de, du dossier SAIM 264814-1709, dans le cadre des expropriations du REM. Il est proposé d'autoriser le directeur général à négocier, accepter et convenir pour et au nom de la ville de Kirkland tout règlement en cours complet ou partiel dans le cadre de ce dossier avec toute personne, d'autoriser le directeur général à recevoir pour et au nom de la ville de Kirkland toute indemnité et à signer tout reçu dans son conséquence avec toute personne et de l'autoriser également à signer pour et au nom de la ville de Kirkland toute entente, contrat, acte notarié que ce soit une session, certitude, etc., de même que tout autre document en lien, direct ou indirect, avec euh, ce dossier d'expropriation ou tout règlement complet ou partiel de celui-ci. Propose that. Propose that, Mike Brown. Je le seconde, Mike Brown. Je le seconde, Mike Brown. Merci. Item 7.2, considering the development of the Northwest land sold to Rose Devil, it is proposed to authorize the Director General to negotiate, agree upon, and sign for and on behalf of the Town of Kirkland any agreement relative to the realization of certain municipal works with Société en Commandit Arrêt West de Lille 4, and to authorize the Director General to sign for and on behalf of the town any other agreement, any notarized deed, whether transfer, servitude, or other, as well as any other document related directly or indirectly to the agreement for the realization of certain municipal works with Societe Commandit Arrêt with the Lille 4 and other persons. Propose. I'll propose that, Steve Bouchard, and second. I'll second the Dominic Sito. Point set point three. Concerning the Ville de Kirkland, we would authorize the launchment of an appel d'offres public to obtain the products of insurance collective for its employees and its élus for the period 2024-2029. Concerning the Mallet Actuaire Inc., it has already obtained the mandate due to an appel d'offres public for the services of consultants independents, requis by the Union of Municipalities of Quebec dans l'application de la solution UNQ. Considérant que la rémunération prévue au contrat solution UNQ à octroyer est de 0,65 au consultant mallette, et les frais de gestion prévus pour l'UNQ sont de 1,15 Considérant que la Ville souhaite euh, maintenant confirmer son adhésion à la solution des recrutements en assurance collective de l'UNQ et confier le mandat à mallette actuelle en conséquence, Il est proposé de confirmer l'adhésion de la Ville à la solution UNQ en matière d'assurance collective pour ses employés et élus pour une durée de 5 ans, donc 2024-2029, et de nommer l'UNQ pour agir à titre de mandataire pour représenter la Ville au contrat d'assurance collective, de même que payer la rémunération privée au contrat. Je le propose, Nancy Cocinacidis. Et seconde qui Je la seconde, Dominique Zito. Oui. Point 7.4, il est proposé de confirmer l'engagement de la Ville à respecter les modalités du guide de versement d'une contribution gouvernementale dans le cadre du programme TEC 2019-2024. Cours comme ça. Je le propose Item 7.5 is the mayor's report on the financial position of the municipality. Bon, le rapport du maire sur la situation financière de la municipalité. Conformément à la loi sur les cités et villes, il me fait plaisir de faire rapport sur la situation financière de la ville de Coupe. Résultats financiers au 31 décembre 2022. Les états financiers ont été audités par la firme comptable BCGO qui a confirmé que ceci donne une image fidèle de la situation financière de la municipalité pour l'exercice financier 
terminé le 31 décembre 2022. Il reflète adéquatement les résultats de ses activités, de la variation de ses actifs financiers nets, de sa dette nette et de ses flux de trésorerie pour l'exercice terminé à cette date. Conformément aux normes comptables canadiennes pour le secteur public, le rapport financier 2022 a été déposé au Conseil municipal le 1er mai 2023. Il y est accompagné des rapports sans réserve de l'auditeur indépendant. Au cours de l'année 2022, les revenus provenant des activités financières de municipalité ont totalisé 138 millions 915 000 tandis que les dépenses et affectations nettes ont totalisé 72 245 000 La Ville a ainsi clôturé l'année 2022 avec un surplus de 66 670 000 dérivé principalement de revenus provenant de la vente d'un terrain municipal dans le secteur nord-ouest de la municipalité, des droits de mutation, immobilier et de subventions gouvernementales. Un excédent affecté de 61 millions destiné aux infrastructures municipales a été créé pour financer des projets d'envergure à venir. Travaux d'immobilisation et projets spéciaux. En 2022, des projets d'investissement totalisant 11 666 000 ont été réalisés, donc la réhabilitation des infrastructures routières sur les rues La Rochelle et Ginger Wood dans le cadre du programme annuel de repavage, il y a eu aussi des travaux de réhabilitation de la maison d'entier, la construction de bassins de rétention et réseaux pluviaires, la reconstruction d'un terrain de tennis au parc Canvin, la réhabilitation du parc château Crippen, l'achat annuel et l'installation de poteaux d'éclairage de rue pour conversion au DEL, l'achat de camions Siro et deux tracteurs et deux véhicules électriques. Le rapport financier au 31 décembre 2022 est disponible sur le site Internet de la Ville au www.ville.crippen.qc.ca et j'ai signé un recul sur le cinquième jour de juin 2023. Je demanderai maintenant au conseiller euh, Stephen Bouchard de lire la version anglaise. Stephen. Mayor's report on the financial situation of the municipality. In compliance with the Cities and Towns Act, I am pleased to report on the financial situation of the town of Kirkland. Financial results as of December 31st, 2022. The financial statements have been audited by the accounting firm BCGO, who confirmed that they provide a true picture of the financial situation of the municipality for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022, and reflect accurate results of the operations, variation of net financial assets, net debt, and cash flow for the year that it then ended in accordance with Canadian accounting standards for the public sector. The 2022 financial report was tabled at the Council sitting of May 1st, 2023, along with the unqualified reports of the external auditor. For the year 2022, revenues from the municipality's financial activities amounted to 138 million 915,000, while expenditures and net appropriations totaled 72 million 245,000 dollars. The town therefore ended the year 2022 with a surplus of 66 million. $670,000 derived mainly from the sale of municipal land in the northwest sector of the city, as well as from transfer taxes and government subsidies. An earmarked surplus of $61 million for the financial infrastructure has been created to finance future major projects. Major capital works and special projects. In 2022, the investment projects totaling $11,666,000 were completed, including Reconstruction of the road infrastructure on La Rochelle and Gingerwood streets as part of the annual street repaving program. Restoration work at Lancy House. Construction of a retention basin and storm sewer system. Reconstruction of tennis courts at Canavan Park. 
Annual purchase and installation of street lighting poles for LED conversion. Purchase of one six-wheel truck, two tractors, and two vehicles. The financial report for the year ending December 31st, 2022 is available on the town's website at www.ville.kirkland.qc.ca. Signed in Kirkland this fifth day of June, 2023, by the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Madam Mayor, do. So, maintenant, au point 7.6, construction financière additionnelle aux organismes communautaires locaux pour l'année 2023. Il est proposé d'autoriser les ajouts suivants à cette liste de contributions aux organismes communautaires. Premièrement, il y a Agovas, accompagnement bénévole de l'Ouest pour 1500 Kirkland Scout Association pour un montant de 200 Kirkland Artist Association pour le 40th anniversary um, of the association, un montant de 1000 Hyde Community Swimming Pool, 1500 Big Brothers and Big Sisters of West Island, 600 et Kirkman et Costum Pool pour un montant de 645 Un proposer. item 8, Human Resources, uh, we have 8.1. It is a proposed to confirm the regular employee status of the Nicole Alves as Section Head Seniors of Programs and Cultural um, programs within the Recreation and Library Department as of May 24, 2022. The latter, the latter having received successfully completed the mandatory trial period, <coughs> all in accordance with the uh, employment policies currently in effect for management and employees of the town of Kirkland. Proposed. Well, excuse me. I propose that John Marshall. And second. I need to second the gentleman to chat here. Thank you. Au <coughs> point 9, comité consultatif d'urbanisme, le point 9.1, il est proposé de nommer Mme Hélène Amini pour siéger à titre de membre votant au comité consultatif d'urbanisme de la ville de Kirkland et d'accorder à ce membre un mandat séjournant du 6 juin 2023 au 31 octobre 2023. We're looking for somebody with at least an architect a by firm, and we found one. Took a while, but we found one, and she's a resident of Kirkland, of course. So I need somebody to propose it. And second. Thank you. Item 9.2. It is proposed to grant a conformity with bylaw number 9063 entitled Bylaw Concerning Minor Exemptions of the Town of Kirkland, the following minor exemptions to zoning bylaw number 9058, uh, to 33 Chaudière Street, lot 192472, in zone 121R, in order to allow the positioning of an in-ground pole at 2.04 meters from the lateral step back instead of 2.45 meters, as stipulated in Article 5.7 A.I. Somebody to propose it? I'll propose that, Steve Bouchard. And second. I'll second the general chat. Au point 9.3, il est proposé de prendre acte de la demande d'approbation des plans d'implantation et d'intégration architecturale et des documents d'accompagnement relativement au projet d'agrandissement sur le lot 1, 991-218, dans la zone 114R, située au 140 boulevard Kirkland, et de l'extrait du procès verbal de la séance du CCU du 9 mai 2023, d'approuver tel quel les plans d'implantation et d'intégration architecturale énumérés au point 3.3.1, du procès verbal de la séance du CCU du 9 mai, les petits plans étant conformes au règlement PIA 2022-55 et ayant fait l'objet d'une recommandation favorable du CCU. Le proposeur. Je vais le proposer du champ Je vais le seconder, c'est Bouchard. Item 9.4. 
It is proposed to take note of the request for approval of the site planning uh, and our architectural integration program and accompanying documents for the expansion project on lot 193150 in zone 123R located at 83 Rondo Street and the extract of the minutes of the PAC meeting held on May 9th and to approve as submitted the site planning and architectural integration plans listed in item 2.2.1 of the minutes of the PAC meeting held on May 9th, said plans being in conformity with bylaw SPAIP-2022-55 and having received a favorable recommendation from the PAC. I propose that. I'll propose that, Steve Bouchard. And second. And I'll second the general chairman. Il n'y a aucune affaire touchant les points 10 et 11 qui traitaient à la présente séance, ce qui nous amène à uh, agglomeration business under item 12. It is time for the mayor's report on the decisions taken by the Montreal Urban Agglomeration Council at the regular sitting held on May 18. Il n'y avait rien où l'agglomération ou les villes défusionnées ou liées pouvaient être subjectées. Donc, tout était accepté de quel ordre. Everything was accepted as is. So, there was no exaggeration or no, no trying to, to pass a password. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Everything was okay for once. So, that's my report. Il n'y a aucune affaire touchant le point 13, affaire gouvernementale qui n'est traité euh, euh, à la présente séance, euh, ce qui nous amène aux résolutions d'appui au point 14.1, considérant euh, que le Centre de bien-être et l'Ouest de l'Île pour personnes atteintes de cancer a reçu l'approbation de Santé Canada pour promouvoir et proclamer chaque 26 juin comme étant la journée nationale de la sensibilisation au bien-être pour personnes atteintes de cancer dans le but de sensibiliser les, Can les Canadiens sur l'importance des soins en oncologie psychosociale. Il est proposé de décréter le 26 juin 2023, Journée nationale de la sensibilisation au bien-être pour personnes atteintes de cancer sur le territoire de la ville de Kirkland et d'encourager la population kirklandaise à soutenir les personnes atteintes de cancer et le Centre de bien-être de l'Ouest de l'Île pour personnes atteintes de cancer qui est situé à Kirkland. Un proposeur. Je le propose, Nancy Kokinesides. Et je m'en dépend. Je le seconde, Karen Cliff. Merci. Item 14.2, it is proposed to declare June 15th as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. <coughs> and to promote this special day by inviting the citizens of Kirkland to show openness and respect towards seniors, as well as to learn about abuse to ensure a better treatment of seniors. Proposed. I'll propose that, Mike Brown. And second. I'll second that, Paul DeFore. Le Conseil municipal prend acte du dépôt de la correspondance du mois de mai 2023 par la Cretière. There is no new business table at the sitting. Ce qui nous amène à la question de période à la suite. Avant la période de questions, uh, I got uh, two counselors and I'm going to address the audience. And I will start uh, first with uh, Dominico Zito to say a few words, and then we'll have Paul Ford also to say a few words. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. For those of you who were here at the last uh, council meeting, I just want to clarify a point that was made. I had mentioned that one of the studies made on Chediac Street for traffic uh, showed that there was speeding in one direction, and that unfortunately this did not meet the criteria followed by the traffic committee. I want to say that I was correct in my statement in that there was a fourth study that Mr. Dufour was not aware of, and that the criteria followed by the traffic committee are criteria based on a policy adopted by a former council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cito. Uh, Mr. Dufour, no problem. Perfect, okay. Okay, 
Oui. Donc, la période de question est maintenant ouverte. Toutes les membres du public qui désirent s'adresser au conseil sont priés de faire la file derrière le micro et de respecter la distanciation physique. Lorsque le droit de parole vous est accordé, veuillez ne pas toucher le micro, énoncer vos noms et adresses et formuler votre question de manière claire et concise en vous adressant au maire dans un langage respectueux. Les interventions sont limitées à deux questions et il vous sera possible de poser des questions supplémentaires parce que tous les membres du public qui désirent s'adresser au conseil auront eu l'occasion de le faire. Uh, donc, public question period is now open. Members of the audience who wish to address the municipal council are requested to line up behind the microphone and to respect physical distancing. When given the floor, please refrain from touching the microphone. State your name and address and direct your question to the mayor in a clear and concise manner use, using respectful language. Each intervention is limited to two questions. You will be able to ask additional questions once all members of the audience who wish to address the municipal council have had a chance to do so. Good evening, I'm Denise Imperial Mangoni. I live at 9 Rue de la Jonquille. And um, I mentioned this to Dominic uh, Zito earlier that I'm curious about if the city is doing anything with Hydro Quebec. Um, we, as many of you were, we were out of power four times since December, most of them more than 12 hours. The ice storm, we understand. But we have power lines underground, and I, I don't understand why. We're, our grid is always out of power. I was wondering if. The city is looking into that. Yeah, we're looking into it. The uh, council uh, asked our administration to organize something with the regional manager, but also um, one of the uh, ed directors, and to bring also an engineer to explain how come so many outage and which area to understand the grid itself. So, yes, we'll probably have a better answer. But I'll give you a related case that happened a couple of years back. At one point, there was a district where we had numerous, uh, numerous uh, uh, power outage. And at one point, I was dealing with a regional manager that I, of uh, Idaho Quebec for the West Island. And I remember calling him and he would basically say, oh, it's the pruning of the street. I said, there's more than the pruning of the street that needs to be done. So I ask, and not ask, I exige that he comes in to bring an engineer and to give us a report on the actual outage and the reasoning behind it. At one point they realized they had something during a period of one year, close to 24, a 25 outage. So they decided to go door to door in the backyard of the resident of all that district they did something like 800 houses if i'm not mistaken and they discovered at that point it was a lack of maintenance they had to replace something like six transformer they had to uh, the resistors on the line they had to replace 50 of them they had to re they had to replace five posts so it was a major maintenance situation and that's what we're probably seeing at this present it's not only the pruning of the trees, you know, that's the first reason they'll give you. There's more that meets the eyes, and council has requested that our administra administration organize something with Idaho Quebec here in this office for our council to explain the situation. I want answers. Because we have no power lines above the ground. No, I understand that. That's even more. <laughs> yeah, that's my next question is, um, we have some issues with our internet, and uh, Bell offers uh, this area only something called Bell 50. And in the downtown core, they have Bell 500, which is a much higher oh, size. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I, I, I've asked Bell every time I call them when we have a problem, when they're gonna come into the West Island and upgrade their system. And um, I'm wondering if there's something that the town can know about. There's continuous upgrades of their networks. Um, it's a major just, upgrade, eh? Pardon? It's a major upgrade from 50 yeah. to 500. But uh, I, I'll have a, my engineering department receives requests regularly, so I can ask them whether or not they've got anything in that area. 500, you said? Bell I believe 500. it's Bell 500. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Come on, we can get back to you. Okay. I, I've had that, I've had that issue with that. Uh, I had that issue and, um, and I needed to work on 
and stuff like that. And uh, so I've had the discussion with Bell, and in our area, they're saying it's going to be three years before mm -hmm. we can do something. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I don't know, something to do. It's a really, really long term. It's because Joe, they can't, yeah. up, they can't upgrade the uh, speed because the Bell fiber, the fiber okay. goes into a box. But from yes. the box yes. to your house, yeah. it's not fiber yet. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's right. the problem they have in certain areas, and the fiber doesn't go directly to the house, whereas downtown, yeah. they have the fiber going right into the yeah. buildings. And they call it fiber to the node, yeah. rather than to the home. That's right. I think there was no fiber on <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Next question. I'm Marine with the ship of the Indian in Northern Hill. Uh, Mr. Gibson, you gave me some homework. And to do less time, we were here, and I uh, went home, and I didn't do it right away, but I did do the homework. I did on the investment that was available. If I could bring yeah, it over, bring it over. We'll give it to our director general, and we'll, that's where you, the trees for the trees were. They should be replaced because they're dead. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Pilo, there's more than one way of scaling a cat. Mr. Pigeon, not Pilo. Mr. Pigeon, there's more than one way of scaling a cat. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, yeah, wisdom. Yeah, wisdom. So um, I went through all the sections where they were dead, were almost dead, they should be replaced. Um, they could be on our list already. Well, I'm not going to dispute anything, I'm just telling you. What I found out, but I will dispute one section, uh, which is right between where the modern Berlin Wall has been built yeah. and the um, Montreux section. Yeah. So that part, <coughs> if I remember correctly, in the early 90s, it was first planted with a lot of trees. And a couple of years after that, I started to notice that they were dead or they had been uprooted. And at that time, we attributed to the fact that the uh, uh, dress cutters, you know, the, the, the company that did the cutting, they were damaging a lot of the trees. And they did bring it to attention uh, several times, if you recall, over the years. Yeah. They have never been replaced, and there should be more than about 175 trees in that zone. But these trees and they're not more than about 50. So, but these trees are on your list. Uh, no, oh, okay. out of the list that I made, I just bring to the fact that okay. originally in the 90s, okay. first started to plant trees in that section, it's been a long ways, okay. and they still have not been replaced. And now it's even difficult to see where the original trees were planted. So I'd like for Gondor to take seriously the replacing of the trees. Okay. But we got a program, that's for sure, for the, especially the integrated shop and the green front. Want to add something, my job? Uh, the reclaimed form Reno, there's a warranty for two years on the tree, so we do replace trees that die. So there's a differentiating factor. You may not like what I'm going to say, but there's a differentiating factor between replacing a dead tree that belongs to us and replacing a dead tree that we've paid a warranty for. So that will get done. I'm still a little confused as to the location where you're saying there's 125 trees missing between uh, or the, the wall that just, they just installed versus well, I can, I can easily point to you, it's, it's, if you take Montrose yeah. and going westward, okay. that's a big area. And originally in the 90s there were over, I'm sure over 150 trees planted. And throughout the years, damage, this and that, and they have never been replaced. So I don't want the same thing to continuously happen because the ones that have been uh, damaged during the last four or five years, they're still not being replaced. And according to what you're telling me, the three years were there, I mean, it's been so fast so many times. So you got the, okay, you're good. If I have any questions on this, Marino, are you good to talk? Marino, are you talking about the trees that are like 
somewhat on the service road between Montrose and Yalgingdon. Are those the two? So, no, I'm road? talking about from the service road yeah. all the way up to where the westward overpass comes towards Montrose, yeah. towards Chavez Saint Marie. Now those are trees. There are trees on the service road that are ours. There are trees on the overpass that are ours. Yeah. The, uh, the trees on the overpass were taken down last year. Yeah. They were dead. And they're being replaced this year. So I'm going to go through your list. There's multiple projects of tree plantations on the south side uh, that might address a lot of your concerns. I'll, I'll give you a shout out and we'll talk about them. Well, I really would like to see the damaged trees that we paid for to be replaced. Yes, I agree. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, the next thing that I have is um, I had to find out from my cousin, Dominic Z. knows, about an article where I felt a little bit embarrassed as to uh, what happened in our city. And in our city, yeah. Here's, here's a, a citizen. I can tell you, I can pull up the article. It's, it's in French, it's on my phone. The citizen traps the uh, Marmont, and she calls the city to help her dispose of it, and she ends up with a fine of $175. Yeah. I don't understand why she was treated like that, and what are you planning to do with no, the change the I'll just ex explain a little bit what I know about it. There's a procedure to follow. Like I had um, two skunk under my uh, uh, front patio. So well, the first thing I did, I thought uh, call public words. That's something she didn't do. And secondly, public work came to see it, saw the situation. They called basically the contractor who we're doing business with in Montreal. What's the name of the difference? Lounge. He came over, saw the situation, put a cage. But there's a period of the year where you can put those cages for any, it could be a raccoon or a, a, a skunk. There's a period of the year where you can put those cages and relocate these animals. But everything is ruled by the, the, the Ministère de la, de la Fond et de la Forêt. So in her case, she didn't do that. She took her own cage and basically caught them in mud. And at one point, we did what we had to do. In hindsight, you know, the judge always gives reason to the resident, but she never followed the proper procedure. And we're reviewing our procedure ourselves concerning all of this. You want to add something, Joe? Yeah. There's a danger of people installing their own cages and exactly. capturing animals. What is if you capture a domestic animal and you're not verifying the cage on a regular basis, the animal could die. Uh, there are specific bylaws in place to control that. We provide an excellent service to our residents as far as helping them. Uh, more importantly, there's a provincial bylaw that says that you're not allowed to capture wild animals exactly. that we have to abide by. So don't always believe everything you read, Marino. Um, there's, there's a justification uh, behind it. Uh, am I happy that a fine was issued? The answer to that is no. Um, to every situation is dealt with separately, uh, but there's a reason why we have procedures in place and why people need to follow those procedures. So we just ask that they respect those. Yeah. But just reading the article, I, f I felt a better person because here's a citizen trying to do the correct thing and she looks forward to our city services to help her. It was the news of the day, Marina. The Nia can. The Nia can. Was it an accurate story? Could I add one thing? It, it was really not. Uh, it was lots of hype over something that. Mr. Mayor, can I ask one thing? Yeah, go ahead. Also, the city does its best to work with the citizens. The city, Mayor. sorry about that. The city does its best to work with citizens when there are issues with animals. Yeah. And you have to understand that this time of year, whether it's a bunny rat or something, you trap an animal, you've now taken away the mother or the father and the babies are vulnerable to, be, to dying. So we do try to work with the cities, like the gentleman just said. We, we do try and we understand that some are annoyances, but you have to understand too that, you know, there's baby animals too. And certain times of the year, you're restricted on who trapping what animals. Um, so there was lots of hype over it. When Denny Akano on one of the radio shows wanted an interview 
to say more than the judge basically went against the provincial law? I said no, no way for me. The, uh, there, was a, there was a company that actually uh, assisted the Denia Canada, or the puppy like that? Yeah, Denia yeah. Canada. Uh, assisted the Shepard, okay. okay. uh, assisted the, uh, the show and explained uh, to the public uh, of the, what the procedures are, what the provincial bylaws are. So, the, and one just to correct your statement before, when you said the resident did the right thing. The resident would have done the right thing if they had called the city exactly. and they had, had asked us to help them handle it. We provide this. Trapping animals on your own is not the right thing. Yeah. Uh, how did the case end up in court? Who brought it to court? But she didn't pay it. We brought it in court. No way. The, the, uh, she, she contested the ticket but never showed yeah. up in court. So typically when you don't show up in court, you lose the ticket. Yeah, but the judge clears it anyway. For whatever reason, the judge took it upon themselves to rule on a case where no one was, re well, no one was present representing the plaintiff. Well, thank you for clarifying the answer. Marino, Marino, Marino ask, ask your cousin about this judge. <laughs> Meeting one. <laughs> Meeting one. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, as you well know, my name is uh, Saint Dijon. My address, if you really want to know, is one six eight seven six francs. About a five to ten minute walk, depending on how fast you walk. Anyway, uh, I have two questions. As you already know, I'm a climate activist, yeah. and recently I talked to two councillors. I won't give you their names, but uh, we know. I am consenting to inform and make Kirkland citizens aware of the latest information concerning the climate and emergency crisis on the climate, climate change. Excellent. So they asked me, they said, well, you should contact your uh, MNA and member of parliament because they're more apt to be able to do something about climate change, which I did a week or two ago. And I went to Monsef Diraji's office in the Greeley building. They wouldn't let me in at first, but finally I came in and I talked to them. And uh, they told me that there's no direct contact with my MA anymore. It's done through an intermediary. And they would contact me when they have an intermediary that would talk to me. So I'm not getting any success with my MA. The same day or the day after, I went to Francis Carpalegia's office, or what do I call it? That's right, yeah, what I call it. And uh, apparently, Francis Carpalegia is too busy to talk to one of his uh, citizens in his writing. And the lady, she said, well, maybe uh, during the summer holidays, maybe in July or August, he may have some time to talk to you. you know? I talked to him when I arrived in 2021 on a Zoom, we had a Zoom together and everything went fine, but I think with the climate crisis the way it is right now, they're afraid, they don't want to talk to anybody, they're probably ashamed of themselves, which is my opinion. Anyway, I'm wondering if you have any other suggestions besides contacting my m and and my member of parliament. That's my first question. You can always go to Ottawa. What can I tell you? Have you ever tried that, Misha, going to Ottawa? Have you ever got any results? I went there to visit our <laughs> so, That's basically it. That's you see, you know that I am, I'm going to let everybody know that I was one of the people that told you to go see your local MA. Which I did. And <coughs> your member of parliament. Yes, which I did. And you do well, no, know that these levels means, of government have a much stronger influence on climate change than your local so municipal your, government. So and I highly suggest that you keep trying to reach them because that is their responsibility. Well, I'll keep you informed on that one. Okay, that's the answer, okay. Uh, the other thing, I sent you an email yesterday on the latest update date on continuing and increasing suicidal fossil fuel energy, mm -hmm. which is today's youth are being left with no future worth living, which I think you should know by now. So basically, I also ended my email by saying, and I sent you, a uh, link to the YouTube, which is the latest one, which as a climate activist, I can tell you this is the best YouTube on climate change I have ever seen, and I've seen thousands, okay? This one is true, honest, and it's real, real and it tells you exactly many information, which all person residents who care about climate change should know, okay? So I intend to spend all summer doing that, 
So anyway, the, uh, I finished by saying, I hope that today's video will act as a wake up call for humanity. So my question is, this is a very important video. Have, has the council watched the video that I sent you yesterday? Yep. Why not? I didn't have the time. I've got more important things. Oh yeah, today. more important than the existential threat to humanity. More important things yeah. today. If I get the time, I will look yeah. at the video. And uh, by the next uh, council meeting, you'll be able to... Uh, you want a report, written report, you said? Well, if possible, anything you want, but then I'd like to know <laughs> what your reaction is and what you intend to do about it. Because if we don't do anything here at the municipal level, they're not going to do anything at the provincial and federal level. They're just laughing at us. That's all they're doing. They're laughing at us. Thank you. Well, not everybody cares. We, uh, it's a very bad angel. We exist bad angel. I'm very good. You upset now? Yeah. Pretty bad. It's, it's pretty much the same question that we get from you every month. Um, we've answered you. We, we do a lot as a municipality when it comes to the environment. Uh, we will continue to do that. We continue to update our programs and update our programs. I would follow Karen's advice. I would continue talking to your MNAs and your MPs. Um, but we are doing and we continue to do things that are good for the environment. So I'm going to be having a campaign of science. I'm going to be going all over Kirkland. And I hope to uh, really have an influence and make people aware and inform them properly on this, the crisis that we are in. It's an existential threat. The children's lives are, are, are in danger. My God, you know, when are we going to wake up? Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next question. My name is uh, Vashir Hahimi, and I live in 22 Beaubois, in the Tilbury area. And I'm here to talk about another exist existential aspect, and that's to sports and activities. Sports? Yes. So I wanted to talk about the use of the facilities of the city for sports, okay. uh, specifically soccer. So we have the parks of Benigal and Smiley, for example. Yeah. Other municipalities allocate reasonable time for their citizens to practice their favorite sport. Here in Kirkland, it was completely out of question to have, let's say, some time to go and play soccer or something. Everything was blocked for the associations like Lakeshore Soccer and some other football association. After uh, many communications with the person in charge, mm -hmm. we were given two hours, one on Friday, six, and one on Sunday at one. For a rental or? We, we asked if we wanted to oh, either we rent or public access. Okay. We offered the public access only. We called, we called uh, I, I personally called the service to rent, but they said they have nothing. Everything is blocked. By the Lakeshore Association? Yeah, make sure association. Uh, well, well, and well. Yeah. So we understand the priority of the association is also for kids and all that. But other municipalities have, a, I think, a better way of serving their, their, their residents. They allocate more time, which is just for public access. And that's what I'm asking. For public access. Public access. We have it for, 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 uh, Skating, we have it for badminton, have, but not for activities. But like my question is Are you part of a, a, an association yourself, or your children are are they part of the Lakeshore Soccer? No, I'm not talking about children. Oh, I'm you're talking, talking about the adults? I'm talking about adults but you've got and they need to exercise to survive if the climate is managed properly. But you want to, to organize uh, we, we organize continuously uh, soccer games among friends, recent, uh, residents okay. here. Okay. And we had to go to other cities like Gerfon, yeah. Il Bizarre, because they have time reserved for their citizens. Okay. They don't give to the associations. So that you go there, first come, first serve. If you want to reserve it, you pay. But here we cannot have a thinker. Yeah, you know, he's asking. It's just like microphone. Yeah, we just have to go on the field and press it. We have to 
just uh, the rest of it could just go on to a field and play without any questions. My question to the administration do we have at least dedicated time for public just without renting we do? We actually have, if uh, you look on your information booklet, they do analysis on the Facebook page of Kirkland. They do have allocated times, I have to say not that much, but they have designated hours where they do allow, of course allow, but they encourage citizens to go. But I have to say, like I think there's only two blocks per week. Uh, no. Right. I think we're referring I think we're referring to the synthetic fields. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. There's yes, and, and, and I think you're you're talking about the two hours that I got from the person in charge, Most and it's time. the first time, the first time in Kirkland that we have time allocated for public access for residents, and only two hours. One is Sunday at one uh, one o'clock in the summer. So, can I ask a question? Sure. Many nights I see grass fields, soccer fields such as Heritage, empty. Yeah, you can. But that doesn't suit your needs. A field. No, the question is, uh, sometimes we go to fields. They're available. Right. You start a game, somebody comes and says, we reserve this. You say, no. how can we reserve on weekends? They say, we're an association. Actually, I could raise, bring to your attention some other fact, and I'm not accusing anyone. Right. But a lot of the times, the fields, these two fields, synthetic, because they're better for old people, yeah. playing soccer for the knees, playing on natural grass is horrible. Okay, so it's That's more the best way to it. I just wanted to clarify yeah. right here. I mean, there sometimes when we have no choice, we do that. But the fields are not used, but nobody can touch them because they're reserved for nature soccer, for example. Yeah. Or for, so you can plan uh, uh, get together, let's meet there, 7 o'clock, we go there and play a soccer game, we start, and then they pick us up. Is there a, just my curiosity, is there some a men's soccer league uh, in Lakeshore? Yes. Well, eh? There is. Well, Lakeshore manages some leagues. Uh, we try for, to, for adults. Well, for adults, yeah. They, they have also, they have for kids, and we couldn't get, by the way, the schedule. When do they play? When do they have time? So this way we can fit in. We learned of one uh, Friday nights. Yeah. We tried to get in there. And what they're telling us is not acceptable to us. We were just there for fun. They say you have to, have, you have to pay. Each one has to pay three hundred dollars, three hundred twenty dollars to be to, to be in the league for the summer. Okay. You have to have jerseys. You have to have a referee. We said, look, we passed that time along. Oh, okay. You don't want to be in the league. You it's just want to have recreational, just free fun, just free exercise. exercise. Yes. But what if you have yourself with twenty of your friends? And at the same time, another 20, 18 year olds show up, and another 20, 30 year olds. And like, how are you, who's going to manage all the time frames of the, all these free hours with little teams wanting to bring their kids? Well, Explain to me the logic with two fields, how you're going to manage, or who's going to manage all this, the time frame and the hours for the public just to go on their own. Well, there is a, uh, an experimental. Uh uh, whatever attempt to solve this problem, and the person who is in charge of these parks, Mike Clayman, has opened Friday at six. Mm -hmm. so, so only Smiley, Smiley, is, but, but there you don't play eleven against eleven for this type of soccer for old people. So you split it in two, and we didn't have a problem since it started in the summer. Okay. So we're saying just add more Fridays at six in the week of the same structure. Yeah. So so in Bizarre, they're giving. Every day of the week, you, have, you can have a, starting from, I don't know, from six to seven or something, public access. We're asking for something similar. Listen, awesome. what we'll do, we'll, we'll look at the situation. I, I have some dead list numbers on my desk. Okay. So I, I'll give them a show back. Excellent. We'll uh, definitely look at it. You, you have enough uh, phone number, yes. I have your number. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent idea. Excellent. Right. Great idea. Again? Yeah, we're here all the time. Like getting Marina the Shibboleth at Morning Hill. Uh, <laughs> reading the local newspapers that Kirkland has uh, reserved 100 spots for the rent parking. 
No, we didn't reserve them. And that article is wrong too. Yeah. yeah. It, we, it's not that we reserve. There's, there's a situation where we'll have a development going there. And the request of council, it's any development that the Rio Can Center should include what we want, at least some some parking. That's all. Well, oh, even the mayor of Beaconsfield was. I don't was care because about. I don't he care about the mayor of Beaconsfield. What he thinks about it's our council. We're looking after our residents and not the Beaconsfield residents. Okay, so what is happening? What is Kirkland doing for the residents parking the situation at the ramp? What are you telling them for Kirkland? It's for Kirkland residents. Okay, but how many spots? A hundred? Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. So it's 200 spots reserved for Kirkland residents, right? Yep. Okay. Now, the question is, how is it going to be administered? We don't know for now, but we've got some future plan. It will be, will be uh, uh, something with the, uh, uh, with the uh, uh, chemical labs, or again, uh, what do you call it, the passing, the, the, the Pass. parking, Pass. yeah, that we give to our residents, you know, Perfect. uniquely, where they could be identified. But we still have a long way to go, you know, for that one. Yeah, you want to make something? Yeah, I'll just say something. Let's be very clear. Rent parking, there's zero rent parking. Exactly. With the rent project itself, we're in a good, position where the Rio Can is being redeveloped. We are hoping to negotiate 200 parkings to be for our citizens, right? So if we're negotiating, we have a, an ability to negotiate with the redevelopment, and we're trying to get an extra 200 parking that could be used for the rent. Not an extra. Yeah, no, no, yeah, extra, yeah, yeah, you're right. 200 parkings for the rent. Now, we're negotiating with the city of Kirkland. We're negotiating on behalf of our residents. Exactly. So whether it's 200, 250, or 150, that's part of the negotiation, which is necessarily ongoing at this point. Yeah. Once that's terminated, the only thing that we can tell you now, we are negotiating for Kirkland residents. Yes. Point you now. So nothing is settled, so the numbers could vary. No, 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 no. We and the planning house we to be applied and distributed. That's what we're asking for because we did some traffic study. We, we want that sector being clogged with intersection uh, where all the intersection fail. We did two studies, one for the project itself, but one also how, how many parking spaces we could take for that area. And the study clearly said not more than 200. The study was made by it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave the question for when it's definitely how many spots are being reserved because, anyways, okay, fine. Rita, if you, say, if you say 200, it's a good number. Okay. It's a good number. Um, moving on to another topic, um, there's a lot of work being done with the water pipes. Yeah, and the one by the water pipe that's the one on St. Mary. I mean the service room. Yes. Yeah, that you, you want to explain. Uh, could I ask a question first related to that? Yeah. Um, is it true that the the city's planning to put in a sleeve? No, that's another project. Where, okay, explain the two project. We have two projects. One that's going on right now, right now on the service room, which is the uh, they're enlarging the size of the sanitary pipe. Yeah. Uh, to accommodate for some of the expansion that's coming in the municipality. Uh, I think what you're referring to is there's a water line from St. Charles to the end of Chimay St. Marie on the south side. We did a phase one of the lining, which you're referring to, which is, is a sleeve that you put on the inside uh, of the pipe. Uh, we did phase one, which was from Mott Rose to the service road at the far west end of the city. This year, our plan is to do from St. Charles to Daniel. Street, and then next year it will be from Daniel back to Monroe. So that entire uh, water line on Chimay St. Marie needs to get uh, re surface relined. And it's a much, much uh, less invasive way 
of lining that structure than it is to have to rip out the entire road and replace the pipe as it is. The it question that I have with regards to the lining, uh, does it look like a piece of paper blown up into a tube or no, is it made out of plastic? It, it's, a PV, it's a PVC finish and it's got, a, it's got a thickness that lasts 50 years or more. So it's not something that's, that's it's not a, not a thin, uh, like you referred to a piece of paper. It's a, it's a proper structural lining. It extends. It extends. And this PVC has enough uh, data yes. not to worry us about the. Uh, it's not the first place. It's not the first place. We get it elsewhere. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, yes, go ahead. I'm, I'm not aware of um, Denise and Perry Allegan. <laughs> Number 5.3. What is the provincial residential swimming pool regulation? And you had mentioned that it's going to now be implemented in 2025. Versus 2020. Yeah, what, just, is, what is it? It's just a that. Is it for personal pools? No. Yeah. It, it, for the pools. Exactly. Personal pools. Exactly. Yeah, and what happened? The provincial government came up with uh, some new rules. And what we're doing, we're extending the date that the provincial government wants to extend. Before it was 2023. Now it's. The people to basically put their fence around those pools. It, the date has been ah, extended to July 2025. In addition to the fence around your property, you have yeah. to have a fence around your pool. Also. Yeah, and just to extend that date to give the time to our resident to comply with it. You the can call the city for. Yeah, so if you've got a pool. In, in 2010, provincial regulations were changed and okay. security was much tighter. Now, what they've done is they've gone retroactively. So they said from 2010, no longer any grandfather rights. Right? People that have a pool you have to secure it in the same manner. So there, there are, if you call the city, we have a team that'll come out and, and visit your site if you're, if you're I'm assuming you're inquiring because you have a pool. Yes. Uh, so come on your site and say, here's the easiest and most effective way to do it for you. Okay, okay. thank you. Any more questions? No. So before closing the sitting, just want to promise you that our next meeting will be uh, Tuesday, July the 4th at 8 p.m. The pressure has a bit to get you here later. We don't forget, bring your kids. Uh, we've got Herbal Day, June the 10th. So bring your grandchildren and uh, or come yourself and have a good day. So somebody to close this meeting. I'll close the meeting, Dominic Zito. And second? And I will second it all four. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.